Welcome everyone to a new episode of the Zono Podcast. Uh, this week, guys, we're gonna talk about uh, players I know battleground. I was supposed to have a guest uh, today, but unfortunately, it it's not gonna happen. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it is what it is, guys. So next week we'll probably have another guest, uh, but today is gonna be you and me, baby. So I got a fourth of a quarter of like an Aquafina bottle of water. Uh, and we're gonna talk about PUBG a little bit. I want to go through a little bit of the data and just like I call it the Twitch Renaissance because I think that this is what it is. But I want to tell you a little bit of like what I think about the game, uh, what it's gonna be in esports, for example. And we're just gonna have a chill podcast, guys. Like nothing crazy. I'm gonna give you a little bit of the numbers, like how many copies were sold, how many people played in the last 24 hours. Uh, Numbers are crazy, guys. Numbers are crazy, and it makes me very happy to see uh, what PUBG uh, is becoming. Definitely a game that is going to grow and hopefully isn't going to die too quick. Uh, that's what kind of scares me, but I'll talk about it later. So, first thing first, guys. So, uh, the game the, the game genre of Battle Royale was first introduced, what up, Clyde Ask, uh, was first introduced by H1Z1. There was like Arma 3, there was like other games that had the same concept, but the 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 really like the game that really attracted the masses, attracted Twitch, the biggest streamers was H1Z1. And I don't think you can disagree with me on that. Uh, H1Z1 really introduced this game and kind of moved a lot of population from like MOBAs like Dota 2 and League of Legends to Battle Royale as an introduction to a new game genre. H1G1 was super popular, it was adopted by like streamers like the Lyric, to a Summit 1G, Nature, like a lot of like big, big streamers and big names within the streaming like ecosystem. But unfortunately the game, whereas it was huge and it grew, uh, like grew a lot, uh, it was... It, there was a lot of requests from the community, and the game just didn't listen to its community. Uh, this is just a quick introduction of the podcast. Uh... Yeah, yeah, Clyde Ask. Full English. Sorry about that, dude. Um, so, um, so yeah, all the requests from H1Z1 were not really respected, and I feel like a Daybreak didn't have a good com uh, community relationship, whereas, like, there's a lot of things that the community were asking and that were not done. I think that H1Z1 changed a bit, but it's, like, it's a little bit too late. It changed a little bit too late, and some of the mechanics, the bugs, the stuff were just like done and not really uh, and just people just left and never came back which happens a lot with any companies or service like when some people are disappointed you just leave and they just never come back uh, so Daybreak really missed out on an opportunity there like the, the their whole eSport uh, stuff like the TV shit that they proposed were absolutely shit nobody watched that it was absolutely terrible nobody knew how Stormen died uh, it was pre-recorded it was not fun the spectator mode was kind of shitty uh, the experience as a viewers was kind of shitty and there's like so much shit going on with H1, H1Z1 that it just like it was frustrating as a community member just to see almost like the company behind it not giving a shit about their game and that was super frustrating and I feel like one day, from one day to another, PUBG just came and literally solved all those problems. So, the first time I saw PUBG, uh, PUBG came out in March 2017. So, uh, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Only seven month old game, guys. And it's already blowing up. Top of YouTube, top of Twitch. Absolutely top of the world right now. Uh, and when it came out, they were like, okay, I feel like th this is the feeling I had, is that we're going to take all your frustration from H1Z1 and just, we're going to transfer it, we're going to fix them, and we're going to put them in another game called Players Unknown Battleground. Literally, the only thing I hate about the game is the name. Like, it's so long to say Players Unknown Battleground. People say PUBG now, so let's just say PUBG. Or we'll say PUBG for the rest of the podcast, probably. So, PUBG, guys, is a game that is super interesting. It's the same, little. it's like the little... It's the same, it's the battle royale, you get parachuted onto a map, you get loot weapons, you gotta get heals, uh, you get cars, and the zone retracts itself, and you gotta be the last man standing. Simple concept, just like H1Z1, super easy to understand. Uh, the mechanics are a little bit different, you have like more snipers, like more aiming stuff, you have more cars, possibilities, and the map is way bigger, I think. I might be wrong on that. But, 
the and the mechanic like the shooting mechanic is closer to Call of Duty I think as well um, yeah like if you guys are really used to shoot on Android Z1 the, the transition with PUBG is gonna be a little bit complicated at first but then you get used to it anyway like that's not a problem so let's talk about PUBG and what it's been right now what it is right now so as I said guys PUBG is like seven months old which is like super young and it's made by the company that made uh, it's made by Bluehole and is the company that made the, the MMO called uh, Ion and Ion was an MMO that was supposed to compete with World of Warcraft and it had its success in uh, Korea and Japan and I think I don't I'm not sure about China but I know that I have a friend that lives in Japan and it, he told me how like Ion was like blowing up and then people were like just excited about it because of the graphics and all that stuff like it didn't work out like it's not the game of the year Ion because World of Warcraft just killed the the competition just like League of Legends killed the other MOBAs but it's still a big company like they have funding they have a great team and and that's basically like that's basically what it is so right now guys PUBG has over 10 million copies sold to this date so 10 million copies guys I think it was like something like let me just just check it out uh, in three days they sold 360,000 copies at $30 each so it's like a, it's insane it's just insane and recently they gave us an update on uh, yeah they gave us an update like I don't know like I think it was like a, a few weeks later a few weeks later and they reached like 10 million copies which is absolutely insane to be honest like I don't think you realize what 10 like 10 million like you tell me there's 10 million players at League of Legends I'm like okay that's that's cool like that's chill that's really nice but those are 10 million people that bought a $30 game in in like six months in a six month period which is like for me absolutely insane and it just shows how how reactive the community is to like games like that and I, I want to say like the reason the title of this podcast or this live on Twitch if you guys are watching this on Twitch it's called the Twitch Renaissance is that because it's the Twitch Renaissance like Twitch was not struggling before PUBG I'm not saying that but it's just that ever since Twitch existed the top four streams the game stream were League of Legends, Counter-Strike, Hearthstone and Counter-Strike, Hearthstone and then the fourth, I guess it depended, but it was usually like Dota 2, I want to say, or it was H1Z1 sometimes. Then Overwatch came, when Overwatch started to, to, to be popular as well, which Overwatch is kind of dying, by the way, but maybe we'll talk about this on another podcast. I, I already have a podcast on this about Overwatch League, so feel free to go watch it, guys. It's very interesting. But yeah, basically Twitch always been like that. Since its creation, it was like League of Legends, Counter-Strike, Hearthstone, and another fourth that is rather like Overwatch or like another game, GTA 5 when it came out, blah, blah, blah. PUBG is the first game that really shook things up. Taking the first spot, like right now as I'm recording, guys, PUBG is the number one with 140,000 viewers, and League of Legends has 75,000 viewers, like literally like almost half of it. And it's really insane to see how like some streamers are just killing it. Like, we're seeing, like, the regular Josh OG, Summit 1G, and there's this guy called Shroud, which was, like, a Cloud9 CSGO professional gamer, who has, like, 40,000 viewers right now. And he showed his numbers of subs that I tweeted, by the way, and he reached 35,000 subs, and he's playing PUBG, like, 15, 15 hours a day. Like, it's crazy. He's, like, he's having so much success. Super happy for him, because he... He was already a god at CSGO and he retired and everything, so it's really good for him. I'm very happy, but wow, like it's crazy how people are insane about the game. And it's really interesting to see how not only it works uh, in terms of sales, but it works in terms of spectator mode. Like people like to watch people play this game, and it, it's just a different aspect of it. And it's super good for the industry, it's super good for just like uh, the game itself and the yeah, and just the industry. So Right now, they have the the last milestone they acquired was uh, a peak player of 1.3 million uh, players like playing at the same time. It's insane. It's insane. But I just want to turn out. I just want to point out that PUBG, what they did is absolutely genius. Is that they listen to the community in a way that I feel like a community of gamers have never been listened to before. 
what I mean is that even before the community asked for shit, they were already fixing stuff that people didn't even realize they needed to be fixed. Like, I bought the game, there was already, like, a server for Australia, uh, for Asia, for Europe, for NA, for whatever, for this, for this, for that. Uh, you, you already, you like, the matching system is really nice. Uh, everything is, it's easy to play. It, like, it's just a good game. Like, you don't have a frustration over nothing. And if I have one complaint, is sometimes I feel like the audio design is not well done. Like, I have trouble seeing, like, where I'm getting shot from. But that's fine, like, that's fine. Like, the game is really, it's perfect as it is. And my, maybe there's, like, some bugs or, like, some shit, right, like, on the left or on the right or whatever. Uh, it is fine. It is really, really fine. And what I want to talk about, well, let me just take a sip of water here. Um, th- what I want to talk about is is really, like, the esports side of PUBG. And this is really what the podcast is all about, is about what is going to be happening with PUBG on esports. So, PUBG in esports is going to be the biggest challenge the company will ever have. So right now, from what I hear on Twitter, from from what the company is trying to hype, there's going to be many tournaments happening, and there's one very soon for like a very nice cash price. So I'm very excited for that. But the problem that H1Z1 had, and again, I'm going to bounce, like I'm going to juggle between H1Z1 and PUBG a lot, because uh, PUBG can die the same the same way that H1Z1 died. I, I consider H1Z1 dead, by the way. I don't think people will ever come back to this game except for like an occasional game or whatever, but this game is dead. Like, if you guys spend hours and hours to become pro, uh, you can stop playing H1Z1. Like, this game will never revive. You're wasting your time. Like, when I see Stormman play H1Z1 on stream, I'm like, bro, yeah, the hype is dead, dude. Like, you gotta stop. You're wasting your time. Play PUBG, dude. So, the mistake with H1Z1 is that, well, the big mistake they did is that they did something on TV. They didn't take like one step. They just took like, they jumped like 20 steps. They already went on TV and they went, they, they, they did a show that was not even broadcasted online. It was super shitty, pre recorded with like a production value that was like absolutely zero. I don't think PUBG is going to do that. They're not stupid, obviously. But what they need to figure out is really the, the spectator mode. And, this is something super interesting is that how are you supposed to have a spectator mode for a game where so much shit is going on all the time? Uh, it's what? It's like a hundred players dropped into a map. There's so many CDs. There's so many streets. There's so many stuff going on that building a spectator mode is going to be super hard. Uh, in League of Legends, it's an AI that does it for a spectator mode that you can find. Um, it is... Um, it's an AI, but for LCS, it's not an AI anymore. I think it's like a, it's half AI, half human controlled. Like there's a guy, it's like a, it's called Observer. Like it's a, it's a job, Observer for esports. And League of Legends is very easy, right? Top, middle, bot lane, dragon, baron, jungle. It's very easy to juggle. The AI understand when something's happening, when someone's taking damage, when someone is, like, it's easy, right? But Battle Royale, guys, how the F are you supposed to build an AI that spectates it? Especially in the first minutes. Like, it is like, I don't know. It is super important to ca- capture the best moments in esports and just to broadcast them and to build hype around them and just do things that are important for the viewers to be excited, to m- want more, to be hyped, to buy jerseys, to do all that stuff. And... I feel like the challenge is going to be like the first minutes of a battle royale when everyone drops and everyone starts to kill himself, blah, blah, blah. And then the more you're going to wait, the more you're going to be into it, the more you're going to like just travel upon like the game, people dying, less people on the map, etc., etc. This is when it's going, to, it's going to become interesting. But it, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's something to think about because I think that when I watched the replay of the H1Z1 Invitational, I think this is what kind of ruined my experience as a viewer. I was not hyped. I couldn't really see the bullet impacts. I couldn't really have a feel of what's going on. And when you think about another uh, CS, um, another FPS game called CS:GO, Counter Strike, they took at least two to three years to build a, a, a perfect spectator mode. And I think right now it's perfect. CS:GO spectator mode is really nice. Uh, the grenades, the the grenades uh, POV. Um, the different like um, camera movements, the different POV, like when you go and you watch the sniper aiming and stuff, 
everything is very timed. Like if you watch a CSGO stream without the broadcaster, you just mute it and you see what the observer wants you to see. It just makes sense. But again, guys, CSGO, it's a five versus five on a very small map and it's very easy to to know what's going on and to control stuff and be like, okay, this guy, blah, 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 this guy, blah, blah, blah. Like it's, it's very easy, right? Uh, and shortcasters are adding value into this because they are... Uh, they are hyping you up, they're explaining what's going on, what's about to happen, what is this, what is that, but the very challenge, the, the biggest challenge is also going to be like to find the perfect shoutcasters. I feel like finding the perfect shoutcasters are going to be, it's going to be super challenging, but if you can find this shoutcaster that will hype everyone up and that will be like giving you like the prediction, what you're supposed to, what, what are you going to see, what, you, what are you supposed to see, uh, what area is this? How dangerous is this area? Uh, this should be interesting. But I think that it's inevitable that we're going to miss actions. We're probably going to miss first bloods. We're going to miss stuff in Battle Royale. And I feel like this is what I think that is not compatible with esports. Is that we saw it in h one z one guys. Like we saw it in h one z one how nobody saw Starman. Starman which is the most... Sorry. Which is... The oh there's a mosquito on my wall. What the fuck? Uh, Stormin, which is, who is, sorry, the most hype H1Z1 player ever, like, everyone loves him, he has, like, 50 kill uh, recordings of himself on his YouTube channel, and it's insane, it's insane, like, this guy is insane, he built, he's, like, the face of H1Z1 in professional uh, level, and you don't even see him die at the Invitational, you're like, what the fuck, but the thing is that you can't blame, you cannot blame people for that. Because there's so much shit going on, you can't be like, okay, guys, like I want to see Stormain die. I want to see him play. Uh, and this is gonna happen for PUBG, and I don't know if it's gonna frustrate a lot of the community. I don't know if PUBG is working on a special spectator mode because a solution could be like, okay, like you're a fan of Shroud, you want to see Shroud play an in Invitational. Here's a spectating uh, window of Shroud in the Invitational, and you watch him, like you watch him, only him play. Uh, but I mean, that would be like interactive streaming platform where you select a player, you follow the player playing, and that could be a solution. That could be a solution if I'm pretty sure some people are working on that. I'm pretty sure it already exists, to be honest. But for me, it's like if you go to a bar and there's a TV here playing uh, PUBG Invitational tournaments, and you sit here, you have your beer, you have whatever, and you watch it, and it's not something that really reflects to you or hypes you or just makes you happy or whatever it could be very frustrating for a viewer and esports is very like that it's that some esports viewers don't play the game anymore they like to watch pro gamers play they like they like that it's like every every soccer fan doesn't play soccer like it's it's the same like that as well and if it's not entertaining to watch i'm afraid that pugg will not be the esports we want it to be i want it to be an esport that is super entertaining of course i want it to be super fun uh but the game is already successful as it is. It can be just a video game like that. Every video game doesn't have to be any sports, to be honest. Uh, but this is probably what people are used to now. It's like you build a video game, then you want to figure out who the best is at the video game, then you make tournaments, and you call this eSport. So it's going to be very tricky, and I'm very passionate about this. Like I really want to hear your thoughts as well. Uh, so feel free to put a comment down below. Like Tell me if PUBG and... In general, like the the battle royale. Sorry if I'm kicking my my mic. I have to stop. I'm just speaking with my hand a little too much. Uh, tell me if the battle royale genre has a place in esports, because it's super tricky. It's like it is very easy to say, yeah, but it's okay if we miss action, blah 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 blah. But I don't know, dude. I don't know. It's it's super. It's like the the esports that work today, even Overwatch guys. Overwatch, it's a six six against six uh, map. It's very small, but like there's so much going on that it's just like as a viewer, you kind of disgusted at what's happening. Like you're just like overwhelmed by action and colors and splashes and stuff like that. And I feel like one second, like you pay attention to this, the best player in the world. He walks to he goes from a tree to another tree. Uh, in this in the same second, the spectator mode changes to another player all over there in the map. While this guy going from a tree to tree takes a headshot, nobody saw it. Everybody's like, "Yo, what the fuck? We want to see it." 
Then they show the replay of this guy getting headshot, and while the replay is is playing, another guy is dying, and like frustration is culminating, and people are like, "Fuck this shit." That's literally the worst case scenario, but that's what I'm worrying about. Like I'm worrying about because like everything can happen at the same time. People, things can happen so quickly uh, that frustration can be really, f really quickly built. And it can ruin the experience. It can ruin the experience for viewers. And it can just ruin the esports around it. So, I would love to sit down with like game developers and just like see what's up and how they're working on a spectator mode, to be honest. I think this is super interesting uh, because this is the future. Like, this is Battle Royale. Is, we're going to see Battle Royales for as long as we saw MOBAs when League of Legends came out. Uh, I don't have a doubt about this. I think that this is the new wave. Uh, we went from MMOs to MOBAs, and now we're, co we're very softly transitioning from MOBAs to Battle Royales. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe PUBG is going to die in two months, but it doesn't look like that right now. Like, it's insane, 1.3 million players in the last uh, concurrent pick players, with an average of half a million players playing the game every day, guys. How flippin' crazy is that? Like, it's insane. It's really insane. Uh... It's crazy, dude. They have 350,000 followers on Twitter. They have, like... They're just popular. Like, they're just doing shit. So, I'm curious, dude. I'm curious about what you think. I'm curious about the future of this. Uh, this is definitely a really nice wave to surf, guys. If you guys want to be a professional gamer, you can still be one, I think. Like, you can, if you give it all to PUBG, you can be an absolute monster. Like, people are not good at the game yet. Shroud is very good. Summit Wenji is good, but he's good. Like, he's skill capped, so that doesn't really matter. Um, there's still spot, guys. Like, if you guys are inspired to be a professional gamer, if you guys want to pursue this life or whatever, this is a game that you can invest some time on. Like, if you get, like, I'll take a year off and, like, play this game 24 7 and just become the best in the world. That's how much risk you can take on this game. That's how much, how much stuff you can believe in this game. Like, it is crazy. It is, it is it is the success of this game is crazy. Ten million copies, guys. Ten million copies. Thirty dollars a pop. Uh, hopefully, they use their thirty million dollar wisely. Like they they just build more servers. They they start doing esports and hopefully they learn from Riot Games because the, Riot Games was super smart. Is that when they started making money from skins instead of like instead of like making shit that doesn't matter. They really, like, worked hard on patches, releasing a champion every week, and just putting all the money on esports. Like, guys, we need to develop esports. It's happening now or never. Like, that's it. That's it. This is a competitive game. Tournaments are happening everywhere locally. We need to make things happen. And hopefully, PUBG learned some of this. Like, PUBG is like, okay, guys, we're going to invest in esports. We're going to make, like, a tournament. We're going to organize, like, the PUBG League or whatever uh, whatever they're trying to do. Uh, they they hit up TSN, Cloud9, Team Rogue, all that stuff. Like, okay, guys, make a team. We're gonna the 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 esports stuff is gonna be uh, a four v four squad, uh, a four squad, whatever, a four person squad, and and that's it. One thing as well that interesting is that PUBG guys, which is a game that I picked up like a few days ago, uh, you can play both as a third person or first person. So. I wonder what would be determined for the esports format. I'm pretty sure it's going to be first person because third person is kind of OP because you can watch behind you while you're running straight. Uh, and this is kind of crazy when you think about it. And driving is very easy and it just doesn't add up. So maybe first person is a solution for for the spectator mode. It's interesting. It's, it's so interesting. Like I'm so curious to see what's going to happen because right now... It's September, people are coming back to school, they play PUBG on the weekend, they, they, they're just excited about it. It's very, very, very interesting. I, I cannot wait to see like what is going on. So, I give you some numbers, some data just to, just to talk about how impressive that is, but right now PUBG is number one on Steam, it's number one on Twitch, it's number one in gaming reddits, it's, everyone is talking about it. So... Very, 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 very cool uh, topic. Uh, hopefully, I can speak about it on another podcast. Uh, hopefully, I can invite someone that is uh, into PUBG or that plays PUBG or that has an organization of PUBG. Maybe I can find 
uh, a good guest to add some uh, some value and some knowledge to this uh, to this podcast. Uh, if you are yourself, I uh, come talk. Let's let's do a podcast next week maybe, and and talk about uh, PUBG. This is super interesting, honestly, guys. If you guys haven't picked up the game yet, go ahead and play it. It is super fun. Get a squad together, and you're gonna have more fun. To be honest, like as a group, the mechanics of like not dying but being knocked out. Uh, because you can be revived by one of your teammates. That mechanic is amazing. And I think it's brilliant for an esports as well. Because it gives you like that second chance. Uh, what else? Like honestly like pick it up. $30 for a game. When I know when I know how much money I spend on League of Legends. On skins and red points and all that bullshit. Uh, $30 is nothing. Like for a game like that it's nothing. You're going to have so much fun. Uh, and the value of the entertainment you'll get from it is absolutely worth it like a hundred X, like a hundred million times. Um, so pick it up. If you guys are in NA, let's play together. Let's let's kick it like the kids said today. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for watching this podcast. I hope you appreciate it. Next week, guys, uh, I, I'm going to try to get a guest. I really want to... I'm supposed to have a guest next week for sure. Uh, we're going to talk to like an esports organization owner we're going to learn a little more about what an esports organization uh does uh at a smaller scale than the biggest one we see uh how can you guys found your own like uh, esports organization what do you have to do what do you need i'm interested in the process of how this happens and how you can start tomorrow and build the company and just build your name and your brand so we'll talk to someone like that next week hopefully hopefully it happens i'm gonna really push it and really lock into a spot and hopefully we go through with it. I'm super excited about this. So thank you so much for listening, guys. You can find me on social media as Twitter, at Zonobra, Facebook, Zonobra, YouTube, Zonobra, Twitch, Zonobra, everything Zonobra, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you for the next one. Cheers.